my friends. It's August. This is Cozy Rosie Reads. It is currently Friday morning, March 18th. I wanted to do this intro now because after work today, after my part-time job today, my partner and my dad and I are going to da 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 da. There's a library book sale happening tonight. It's the Friends of the Library book sale and I'm so freaking stoked. So we're going and I'm really, really excited. I don't need more books in my life. I have so many unread books right now, but seeing all of my unread books, you can almost kind of like see how overflowing my shelves are behind me over here. It just inspires me. I know that my next favorite book is somewhere in there and it inspires me. And I'm just so happy and excited. And the Friends of the Library book sale, obviously the proceeds go to the library. So we're supporting a good cause. And it's also hella cheap very very cheap books <laughs> so i want to take you all along with me there we're gonna see what's what's up see what's around see if i can find anything i haven't been able to go to a library book sale in a long time because they always were on days that like i had a wedding or a photo shoot so it's been like a few years since i've been able to go to this library book sale that happens like biannually i think and i'm i'm just so stoked we're gonna see what's there I don't really have any intentions of anything I'm particularly looking for, so I'm just gonna go in, see if there's some cool books that I've never heard of, or maybe even some classics would be awesome. We're just gonna see, and I'm really excited. So instead of like waiting for a big book haul as well, I wanna show you the books that I got. Yeah, I'm gonna walk you through the books that I get. Hopefully I find some good stuff. I'm really excited. I really hope you're doing well. I've missed you. Thank you so much for being here. And uh, we will cut to some montages of the library book sale. So, I got Before the Fall, Ooh. which sounds really fascinating. Kind of sounds almost like Lost, except it's it's like a mystery thriller. I'm gonna read you the I'm gonna read you the description of this because I'm like I'm actually really fascinated with this. On a foggy summer night, eleven people, ten privilege, one down on his luck painter, depart Martha's Vineyard on a private jet headed for New York. Seventeen minutes later, the unthinkable happens: the plane plunges into the ocean. The only survivors are Scott Burroughs, the painter, and a four-year-old boy who is now the last remaining member of an immensely wealthy and powerful media mongol. As the passengers' intrigue un is unraveled, odd coincidences point to a conspiracy. Was it merely a dumb chance that so many influential people perished, or is it something far more sinister at work? I was really fascinated by that. That sounds really cool. And like I, I like that time jump back and forth, and I think that yeah. will be really interesting. I hope. I like the cover a lot. Me too all backstories of the passengers and crew members. 
Oh. So I that's that's actually probably one of the top of my list. Ooh. Um, cool. This one I thought was interesting, but I don't know if it's gonna be good. <laughs> Magdalene Magdalena, that's the main character's name. Magdalena has an unsettling gift. She sees the truth about people written on their skin. Names, dates, details, both banal and profound. And her only relief from the onslaught of information is to take off her glasses and let the world recede. Mercifully, her own skin is blank. She meets Neil. She's intrigued to see hit her name on his cheek. He's from Paris for the summer, studying a medieval pilgrimage to the coast of Spain, where the body of Saint Jacques is said to have washed ashore, covered in scallop shells. Magdalena, desperate to make things right after her best friend dies, a tragedy she might have prevented, embarks on her own pilgrimage not before Neil falls for her, captivated by her pale eyes, charming Eastern European accent, and aura for heartbreak. So, like, it sounds interesting. It's I, I, How do you find books? Like, like uh, I just, like, if I saw this fine, I wouldn't have picked it up at all. But, like, that is, it sounds, okay, so it could. I love that word. Yeah. <laughs> that's oh, that's yeah. actually why I picked it, but. Oh, um, yeah. And then oh, I saw the boy. cover, and I was like, eh. And then I read, and I was like, I'm in the I'm world. really intrigued by that. Like, I hope it's good. Me too. Like, Me with too. that plot, like, it could so easily, I feel like, be hokey. Mm -hmm. But if it's done really well, like... I almost put this one back. But I like the cover, so I kept it. But I was really on the fence about it. This is the back of it. This is the back that says, In the 1930s, a mother and daughter are burned at the stake as witches. Their story inspires an urban legend told around a campfire in the 50s, a 70s horror flick, a 90s metal remake, and a true crime podcast, but all the storytelling comes with a cost. And I was like, oh, that's, that sounds that's an interesting fun. interesting thing. So this oh, is I the, love that cover, too. too. The, the, the blurb is, A memorable, disquieting ghost story about stories rendered inside a Mobius strip. Ella Louise has lived in the woods surrounding Pilots Creek, Virginia for nearly a decade. Publicly, she and her daughters, Jessica, are shunned by her Upper Crest family and the local residents. Privately, desperate characters visit her apothecary for a cure to what ails them until Ella Louise is blamed for a death of a prominent customer. Accused of witchcraft, Ella Louise and Jessica are burned at the stake in the middle of the night. Her burial site is never found, but the little girl has the most famous grave in the South. Their story will take the shape of an urban legend told around a campfire by a man forever marked by his childhood in encounters with Jessica. Decades later, a boy at that campfire will cast Amber Pendleton as Jessica in the 70s horror movie inspired by the witch girl of Pilot's Creek. Amber's experience is on set, so it's like it's like a almost like it's one story and then it's like the retellings of that story and yeah. like in novel form. And I was like, that's something I think it could be executed really bad though. Mm -hmm. I think it could be really boring and like shitty and like mm -hmm. have no plot that's yeah. what i'm scared about but yeah, and it might be like backstories of like all the people telling the story too which could be interesting but yeah the description on the back just sounds like i so that rad. that's that's what got me this these two are my fun books that i don't yeah. they're not like high tier content but oh, um really all the fun stuff this is this is this one it's a it's a rom-com doomsday it says, magic is real. A handful of sorcerers wield arcane power against demons and the forces of darkness. These protectors of the powerless are the best magic users of the world. Unfortunately, Drew isn't one of them. She's got magical potential. She uses crystals to see enhancements, and she can reach research practically anything in the library in the back of her little store, sandwiched between a pawn shop and a 24-hour liquor mart. She sells enough crystals, incense, and magic charms to scrape by. Everything changes the day a handsome mechanic pulls up in a in a possessed black muscle car, his eyes glowing red. <laughs> Just being near Grayson raises Drew's magical powers to dizzying heights. But he has been cursed but he has been cursed to transform in a, into a demonic creature that could bring about a fiery doomsday. There's only one chance to break Grayson's curse and it's about to fall into Drew's inexperienced hands. Is that that's like, so that's fun. Like a fun like, that sounds yeah. so fun. Can her magic save the world yeah. before his curse, curse destroys, destroys it? <laughs> I was like, I'm going to get oh it. God, like, it's like a fun. So fun. This one, did you ever watch the adjustment video? I wanted to when it came out because I love that kind of stuff. It's it's good. Like I remember it. I remember liking it. I don't think it's like a work of art, but it's it was a good watch. I think this kind of reminded me of it, but I still was interested in it. it says Tom Hazard has has a date. Wait, that's Matt Haig. 
That's the author of the Midnight Library. Yeah. Did you? You didn't like it. I didn't Jane, like though. it. But, uh, I haven't heard of this one, though. It says, Tom Hazard has a dangerous secret. He may look like an ordinary 41-year-old, owing it to rare conditions he's been alive for centuries. Tom has lived history performing with Shakespeare, exploring the high seas with Captain Cook, sharing cocktails with Fitzgerald. Now he just wants an ordinary life. So Tom moves back to London, his old home, to become a high school history teacher. The perfect job for someone who has witnessed the city's history firsthand. Better yet, a captivating French teacher at his school seems fascinated by him. But the Albatross Society, the secretive group that protects people like Tom, has one rule. Never fall in love. As painful memories of his past and the erratic behavior of the society's watchful leader threaten to derail his new life and romance through the one thing he can't have just happen is to, is the one thing that might save him. Tom will have to decide once and for all to remain stuck in the past or finally begin living in the present. I was just like, oh, that seems like a fun, like, read, you know? Yeah. That could also be really bad for him. So. Yeah. Well, I'm curious if you'd like something like that, like kind of adjustment bureau-y, yeah. the coincidence makers. I still really still. want you to read that one because it's like a like, big plot where it's like people who like shouldn't exist but do exist, they help make coincidences that set you up for the rest of your life basically but it's just done really 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 well so it's like good plot but then really good storytelling yeah, yeah, yeah. like this one or if i wanted more from this one yeah you know that's yeah interesting. what a good pile yeah i'm glad you found stuff you got right? double my pile i got a lot triple my pile i, I got a lot oh friends i got some goodies i'm so excited <laughs> i don't know what it is about being surrounded by so many books and like just spending over an hour looking through everything and like I have a huge stack here how many books do I actually have I got 13 books so everything uh, all together was like less than 20 bucks so that's pretty awesome but I have to share my favorite thing that I got because it is the complete series sex in the city it's like a collector's edition velvet cover Inside, it has oh, stunning all of the DVDs. Every spring, I rewatch Sex in the City. Fun fact about me, I am currently on season three of my rewatch. For some reason, it's always like March. I'm just like, I need to rewatch Sex in the City. It's my favorite show of all time. So, I originally saw one of these for sale at like my local record store, and it was used and it was like 50 bucks. And I remember, like, mm, I don't know, I can watch it online, it's fine. And I always regretted it. This was listed as $10 at the library book sale. When my partner checked out, they only charged $5. <laughs> you can buy this brand new on Amazon for $120 in the States. So the best find of the year, um, non-book related, but like I, I am obsessed. Um, should the internet cease to be a thing <laughs> and I just find an old DVD player, I'm going to be set. But like it even has these like gorgeous photos like I love sex in the city okay on to the books I'm gonna go quickly because I do have 13 books like I said the first book I found was actually swimming home by Deborah Levy um I have never read a Deborah Levy book and the only reason I actually heard of this one was because I was out at a cafe one time and there was this young woman sitting drinking her coffee outside by herself reading this and I remember seeing the cover it wasn't this cover design I don't I'm not particularly a fan of this one but it was like the blue cover swimming home diagonally and I saw the cover and I was like I'm just intrigued like I want to be reading what you're reading right now like enjoying a coffee outside by yourself so I looked it up and since then I've just wanted to read it so swimming home Deborah Levy I also found a copy of the color purple by Alice Walker I have never read the color purple I am just so happy they actually had several copies of this version which is a little older and this one was printed in 1983. I love the older editions and stuff so color purple. Then I got The Icarus Girl by Helen Oyeyemi. I love Helen Oyeyemi's writing. I have this will be my second book on my physical TBR that I have of hers that I haven't read yet but I'm very excited for this one. I just want to read like everything by Helen Oyeyemi so seeing a used copy fantastic. Then I picked up Gift from the Sea by Anne Morrow Lindbergh. I had never heard of this and then I went over to the classic section of the library book sale and it was in there so I was like oh am I just like under a rock? Do I not know what this is? But yeah I just was really intrigued by the cover and the small shape of it and the chapter titles are just all these different shells and I'm a huge fan of shells if you didn't know that. I have shell tattoos. So I got this but 
I got this really cool book called Visitation by Jenny Erpenbeck. It's translated from German. Seems so atmospheric, so up my alley. Again, another very tiny, slim book. So far, all of these are like pretty slim. And this just sounds awesome. Like very unique literary fiction. So really jazzed about this one. And then I found this gorgeous copy of The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. It is hardcover. It is actually large print, which is awesome. I just love this teal. I already own a copy of The Great Gatsby, but this format is just stunning. And the fact that it's a large print is just so nice. Um, so I was really curious uh, and, <laughs> and I was like, oh, I wonder when this was published because it looks old, right? Like this cover, it's very, it's a very sticky cover too, though. I will say like this hardcover is just a little tacky, sticky wise, you know, there's like been some stuff has been spilled on this thing. And I saw this, edition was published in in 2014 so it's not <laughs> I didn't notice that until I got home but I just really admire this copy I think it's stunning I I really really like large print I think it's so underrated it's awesome and then I moseyed on over to like kind of the more classic section and I found Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens this sticker it looks like it's been on here for at least a decade I don't know how I'm gonna get it off like it's so old, but I've never read A Christmas Carol. Again, just tiny, hardcover, so, so cute. Really weathered old pages. It smells so good. Oh my gosh. When was this one published? 1980, but it just smells so good and delightful. So I've never read Christmas Carol. This is definitely gonna be a holiday read. I'm so excited. And then I got Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, which I've never read by Robert Louis Stevenson. I'm very excited to read this one. Obviously, I know like the literary references, but like the duality between good and evil, but I've just never read it and I'm really excited. I just had no idea it was like this short. So really good find. Then I also got a cute copy of A Portrait of the Artist of the Young Man by James Joyce. Gorgeous cover. It's a very tiny slender book. Don't think the spine has been cracked. It, it, this one intimidates me. This one intimidates me. The text is very, very tiny, but I feel like this is a good one just to have on my shelves for, you know, almost like I just like collecting classics that I know I want to read eventually, but I might not read them until I'm like 50 years old or something. But like, if I just have them, it's cool. You know, it's just nice to hang on to them, especially if they're like this pocket size, so tiny and cute. So I got that. Then I got Ethan Frome by Edith Wharton. I have so many Edith Wharton books on my shelves, like my physical TBR. I have not read any yet, but I am so excited to. And I just had no idea Ethan Frome was this small. And I'm really, really excited about it. So that's a good one. Penguin Classics Edition. Then, changing pace a little bit, I found this gorgeous like book of poetry by Anselm Holo. Uh, it was a Finnish author. This is Finite Continued. Oh, this poetry, like just flipping through it, I was like, this seems like my kind of poetry. This is one continuous poem. So we have this really cool portrait of the author here. I think this was like 80s, 1980s maybe. These poems were written between 1977 and 1980. So there is just a lot of cool poems in here. There are 112 poems, some cool like photos in here. I've just never heard of this um poet or this artist and I, the writing style just seems 100 percent my style um and it does seem like he did write it in english so that's really interesting so finnish author wrote it in english i'm really excited for this one then i picked up a short story collection called passion and effect by Lori coleman these are short stories that just upon like flipping through it i was like yeah this is my jam just like very very short snippets of people's lives i realized i just really enjoy that where it's like almost like a little bit too much detail about someone's life but then it just ends you only get like a day or a little insight into their life i really like that so i picked this one up as well and the last book i found was the empathy exams by leslie jameson and when i brought this home my partner was like oh my god i read some of these essays for class and i love it and i want to read it after you so this seems to be like a really good one but this is um mix nonfiction study of psychology and empathy mixed with like a memoir of this author and what she's personally gone through um, because she actually works as a medical actor so she like pretends to have these ailments and then doctors or nurses or medical staff 
have to treat her like she has these ailments and stuff so all about empathy and how us as humans interpret empathy and if we how we're capable of it or incapable of it what situations make us feel more empathy than others i'm really fascinated by this this seems like the type of nonfiction that i would definitely love to read more of so that is my stack friends my beautiful little <laughs> stack i have no room for these i have no room for these but collecting all these books just makes me so happy and i just like can't stop purchasing used books but you gotta think about it. if this is my like vice then that's my vice you know just buying a bunch of used books and hopefully saving them from landfills or just a life of just sitting in a box in someone's basement i'm just happy to have them so i'm thoroughly exhausted uh it's raining out right now which is lovely i'm gonna get changed into some pjs now and out of my raincoat that i just realized like i'm still just chilling in so yeah, that's my little book haul. I'm feeling really, really good. I love library book sales. I just feel so good. And I just like, can we just appreciate this one more time? Like, oh my God, I'm just like, <laughs> this is the best purchase of my life. <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> I've wanted this for years. <laughs> all right, that is it for me, friends. I will check in with you all tomorrow.